What's up, YouTube? This is Mathwiz97, and welcome to episode number 23 of my SmackDown vs. Raw 2006 General Manager Mode. As we're here for the August 23rd edition of Friday Night SmackDown, coming to you from Hartford, Connecticut. So it looks like the number 23 is a big number in this video, as we just passed the 23 second mark of the commentary but as we can see we have a big 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 main event in store for you later on tonight as currently as we speak Chris Benoit and Randy Orton are being taken to a nearby bar and yes they are going to be having a brawl inside of that bar in our main event tonight as they look to bring their feud to a conclusion and while we wait for them to get to that location, we've got a Cruiserweight Championship matchup for you this evening. As we can see, the former Cruiserweight Champion, Rob Van Dam, gonna go one-on-one -on -one with Captain Charisma, Christian. As Rob Van Dam looks to try to win back that Cruiserweight Championship, Van Dam, of course, has been battling it out alongside and against Paul London. And Van Dam, he has I mean, the Cruiserweight Championship was not on the line at SummerSlam, so we're putting it up for grabs here tonight. Van Dam proving himself to be the top contender in the Cruiserweight division at the moment. Although Paul London, he has been you know, stepping up his game, proving to be a very close second, but still Van Dam was the, um, Van Dam was the choice for this matchup by SmackDown management, AKA me as Van Dam now sweeps out the leg of Christian. Paul London at ringside for this one, of course, as he is feuding out, feuding it out with Rob Van Dam. And he's looking to get a good ringside seat for this matchup, just to kind of scout out his competition. Not only Rob Van Dam, his rival, but, well, at least his current rival, rival, and the Cruiserweight Champion as well, Christian, in this one. Paul London gets, you know, a good view of his future competition as Van Dam now drags Christian to the center of the ring. Cartwheel moonsault right there from Van Dam. Of course, with that high-flying, innovative offense that Van Dam possesses, utilizing it to its full effect here to try to take down Christian. But we have seen Christian and Van Dam compete against each other on two separate occasions, one of them being in a battle royal for the Cruiserweight title, which Christian won. And then, of course, in their rematch their one-on-one -on -one matchup back at the Great American Bash pay-per-view, which, of course, Christian won. That's how he came to still be the Cruiserweight Champion. But Van Dam here tonight, he's looking to utilize, perhaps his third time could be the charm, the third time they faced off. And Van Dam, he's looking to recapture the gold tonight. He still has not... He's not lost track of his uh, goal, his aspirations to win back the Cruiserweight Championship. As, oh, Christian! Completely uncalled for. Low blow, blatant low blow right there. Oh, well, guess it's turnabout's fair play. Rob Van Dam with a low blow of his own because, hey, low blows, they, they don't really need a disqualification, do they? I mean, this, this yeah, I know it's the Ruthless Aggression era, I mean... The disqualifications, they, they don't they don't happen. Outside interference? Nah, that's okay. That that's perfectly fine. You want you wanna low blow somebody, that's cool. That doesn't break the rules. You're you're fine. That that works. Some this I I really don't understand the referee in this game. We need to like hire a new one. This this one is questionable, to say the least, in his uh his um his refereeing, his calling of the match. Very uh, unique, I guess we could say that. Um, but I'm getting a bit sidetracked about this whole referee business. But while I am sidetracked, I do want to touch on a little bit. I know by the time this video gets up, it's going to be kind of dated. But the Terminator uh, pre order DLC trailer thingy was uh, revealed today. Arnold Schwarzenegger is going to be in WWE 2K16. And if you're wondering what my opinion on that is, uh, 
Well, at least this way, if I don't pre-order the game, I'm not missing out on anything. So if, you know, not just me, but if, if anyone pre-orders the game, they don't have to wait till January for to get something worthwhile, like Sting, or, um, I don't know, Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, whatever the case is, Ultimate Warrior. You know, this way they're not missing out on anything. You really don't have to pre-order the game. That's just my personal opinion on it, though. I guess some people might find that cool that Terminator is going to be in WWE 2K16. That's, uh... Ooh, that's super exciting. Yeah, I, I personally am not excited for it. I don't think it's a... It's... If it's maybe just, like, the replacement for Hulk Hogan, I mean, eh. Hogan, his moveset isn't that... I don't enjoy it that much. Anyway, but the one thing, you know, also with Hogan being removed from the game... Not too happy about that, but I can understand it from a marketing perspective. As for Hogan, like, being removed from the WWE history, that's, I think, a little bit extreme. But in terms of being removed from the game... I can understand it from a marketing perspective. That's cool and all, but... Oh, look at this! Christian! Christian with a sledgehammer choking out Van Damme while the ref was down. And, well, normally Christian would be disqualified for that, but he manages to get away with it. And now a kill switch! Oh, come on. Christian, he's, he's about to steal this one. Hooks the leg on Van Damme. Damn it! Christian, he's gonna walk away with the win as he just flat-out stole this victory. But I hope you're all excited because we're about to get this bar brawl going. Both of these men. Oh, wait a minute. Roll up by Orton. Orton could win early. Perhaps nothing even happens. No, Benoit kicks at it too. Wow, what a false finish that would have been. Or that it was. But, yeah, as for Hogan, you know, him being removed from the game, I get it. I just hope that they don't take out, like, his moveset, his entrance, that sort of thing. Um... Uh, Depending, you know, what the create an entrance does this year, if it's actually going to be, you know, good. Because, I mean, in WWE 2K15, the create an entrance, not only did they take away all the presets that weren't from other superstars already in the game, but you couldn't even use every single superstar that's in the game. You had to, like, if you wanted to do the advanced settings, you were limited to even the superstar entrances that you could use. That I didn't understand at all. Doesn't make any sense. That's what makes the entrance more, you know, unique, more customizable, but you don't even get access to everybody for an advanced setting. I, do I don't know how, like, the programming for the game works, so I'm not gonna, like, be... I'm not gonna bash it, like, oh, that should have easily been in the game, because, if hey, I don't know what all it takes, so I'm not gonna lie and pretend I do. But it's, it's kind of disappointing, is what basically I'm saying with that. Uh, and then with moveset as well, I mean, especially the comeback. Hogan's comeback, it's iconic. Every, I mean, it might be tied to Hogan. I mean, obviously everybody knows what that it is. But I hope they do something like, like what they did with Zack Ryder's comeback, where it just became the East Coast comeback. They just give it some sort of, like, generic name. Um, like, fired up comeback or something, I don't know. But I just, you know, the move sets like, that's one of my favorite parts about making a created wrestler. And just... And my commentary randomly cut out from the last part for no apparent reason. My mic didn't get unplugged or anything. It just stopped. I have no idea why, but... Uh, let me try to pick up my place where I was. So, move sets, yes, they are what make the game better, in my opinion. Because, you know, the more you can customize, the more move variety you have... You know, they're the moves you use all the time. You use, I mean, you know, obviously, the appearance of your call, and then the moves. The moves that you use, because that's what you're going to be using every single match. That's your bread and butter. And if you can't, if you don't have as much variety... I mean, I highly doubt that they're actually going to remove it from the game completely. Because, I mean, I'm, they have people like AJ Styles and whatnot. They have move sets for them. And that would, I mean, they're not even in the company, so they have, like, the indie moves as well, so I would highly doubt that they're gonna completely remove Hogan's comeback entirely. Maybe they'll just give it kind of a, uh, Zack, a Zack Ryder comeback treatment, where it'll just be, like, the East Coast comeback. And I apologize if I said that already, but I honestly don't remember where I was 
what I was talking about when I got interrupted for whatever reason. I still don't know what it was, so I'm gonna have to keep an eye on this whole audio thing to make sure it's working while I finish up this commentary that I already finished. But anyway, Benoit and Orton continue to fight. Uh, I don't think I missed anything that I had previously said about the game, um, about 2K16. That was basically just kind of like my thoughts on the ODDT to the floor by Benoit. And you can see these two are just destroying, they're just beating the living crap out of each other. We've got that jukebox over there. I mean, there are some cool things here that you can do in these sort of environments. The bar, the parking lot, the backstage. I mean, we've got that LED sign that's just shorting out at this point. Um, getting People getting clotheslined over the counter of the bar. That glass bottle coming into the coming into play. And then uh, the, the pool stick as well. And in a few seconds, that jukebox is that jukebox is going to malfunction here because Orton gets tossed into it. But that's what's really cool about these backstage brawl sort of areas. And I'm sure people will probably say, "Oh, well, in this game, you could explore, you know, this whole place, and you could go into the city and whatnot, and you could you had complete free roam over the locker room and arena, everything." Yeah, that'd be cool if they could get back to that point someday. But, you know, it's, it's a rebuilding process. you got to get, you know, there's certain things that will uh, hopefully be brought back into a game one day. Certain things that we probably, maybe, won't ever see again. But I'd, I'd like to at least see some sort of backstage brawl. That's something that, had I edited my universe mode as heavily as I do now, like if I actually... Um, you know, because back then I just relied more on more on cutscenes in 2K14. I didn't do as much with, like, more of the hands-on sort of edits that I do now with, you know, like we've seen uh, that one time in universe mode where Roman Reigns came down to save CM Punk. Spoilers if you did not see episode 59, but that's, that's a while ago. Um, but yeah, something like that, where it's more heavily edited. Um, that's something that would have been cool. But look at this, Benoit, bar! I botched it. I didn't botch it the first time, but of course, since I had to go back and redo the spot, I messed it up. But we don't even need a three count to know that Orton is down for the counts. That glass bottle busted over the skull of Orton. I mean, if you kick out of that, good, yeah, good luck with that. You get hit in the head with a glass bottle. How Orton is not busted open, I have no clue, but if you get hit in the head with a glass bottle, you're done. You're down for the count. So as we can see, no, Raw, how do they beat us in the ratings? How? We had that killer main event. I don't, ugh. So we had Hollywood Hogan and also 80s Hogan on the free agent wire. They have been added there. And you can see here, Christian has won 10 matches in a row. I didn't even realize this was happening until this news popped up. Well, he certainly is on a row, ten victories in a row. I gotta check this out. We got, we gotta check, we gotta see what his, what Christian's record is. I mean, that is just, that's just unreal. And of course, we have the British Bulldog who's like, "Give me a title shot," because you know one of the challenges in this game is morale. And granted, it's not quite as realistic as it could be, but if it was, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't make the mode as challenging because it's like I'm a month overdue for a title shot. One month. These people are greedy. You have people nowadays who will go years without getting some sort of a title shot. One month. <sighs> to be complaining after a single month, that is, uh... I don't know. So that That's the challenge of this game. And, it's, you know, it's not really something I'm complaining about, but it's just like, come on, people, you're ungrateful. Uh, but, yeah, as I was saying earlier... Um, oh no, that's why we lost in the ratings. That right there, that blue thumbs down is why. What did we get? What did we get? Three and a, oh no. Three and a half star main event. That was supposed to be like five stars. Ah, no. Or at least like four stars. Ah, that's why we lost. What did Raw get? Three and a half. Ugh. Crap. That's not good because that was like our last big feud because now we gotta wait until we build up new big feuds. So, whoa, that's not good. 
Yeah, there, Bulldog, he's complaining. He even sent us an email about it. As you can see in the fan support, Raw is turning things around. But we've got a big enough lead that I think we'll, we'll be okay for a little while. Nothing disastrous could possibly happen. But that's it for this episode. I want to thank you all for watching. Apologies for the interruption. And until next time, keep on YouTubing.